real estate makes money in four different ways. And in that, it's unlike any other investment. I'm going to show you those four ways right here and now. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Appreciation, depreciation, taxes, and amortization. These are the four ways in which real estate makes money. Now, you can go out there and you could buy stocks, you could buy precious metals, you could buy cryptocurrencies, you could do anything. But when we look at what real estate has, there are some very specific advantages. Each and every asset class has pros and cons. There is no question about that. There's no denial. And that's why we need to have a diversity. We need to have that and also geographical diversity because we don't know the future. We can't tell what will happen. You could buy real estate in a particular area and that area goes down. You don't want to own it in one of these cities that looks like absolute mayhem and apocalypse these days because the trend heads down. You want to have real estate where jobs are moving in, the economy is doing well. Even when financial conditions are tightening, they're still able to do well. More money is moving in and the crime stays reasonably low. Things can change, of course. But I want to show you these four things and why it's so different than other assets. Appreciation. As the currency is devalued, assets rise nominally. You could preserve your wealth by holding a real asset such as real estate simply because of the currency losing its value over time. So just for that one reason, you got to think about this. So the central banks are printing money and as they print that money, the value of it goes down, but that means it costs more of those dollars to buy everything, food, energy, real estate, and so on. And so we don't know exactly where that will end up and it's hard to determine, but in general, real assets rise over time. Now you can increase the value of that real estate by fixing it up. You could make sure that the tenants are paying on time, that you have very low vacancy rates. You could take one house, split it into two. Now you got two sources of income, all these different things. And that helps with appreciation over time. That's really important. Now, when you look at uh, commercial properties, like let's say the, the unit, you got 50 units in one property, 100 units in one property, multifamily real estate. If you increase the rent, it increases the value of the property instantly. It doesn't work as much with uh, comparables like you would with a single family home. So that's where it differs a little bit. And understand that if you suddenly renovate all of the units, now instead of it being $1,000 a month, let's say, and now you can charge $1,200, $1,300 because you've put all new flooring in, new kitchens and so on. Well then, you just increased the value of that entire property immediately because the rents have increased. Okay. Now that loosely applies to uh, what you would see with single families, but it really depends on the area and comparables play a much bigger role. Okay. Now depreciation, depreciate This is an interesting concept because it's going to allow you to create what they call a phantom loss on an investment property, a property degrades over time and governments want people to take care of their buildings. So like, they, they can't actually do this all on their own. They can't go and repair and do, redo concrete and rebuild, you know, put an extension on that home and fix foundation problems. They, they can't do that. So what they're doing is incentivizing people to actually do so on their own. And that's what this is all about. So the property's value over a period of time goes down, 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 even as it's appreciating. So the depreciation happens even as it's appreciating. In Canada, they call it CCA, okay? So it works a little bit different, uh, but the, the point here is the same. Capital cost allowance and uh, depreciation, the, you just call it depreciation. And what this means is basically, you gotta go through your right channels, your lawyers, all these things, but they know how to do this. They know how to make that work because it's a, a legitimate thing. It's something that you do not have in other asset classes. You do not. And when you look at depreciation for some buildings, um, you know, it could be significant, especially if it's an older building. 
they have what's called accelerated. You could search for this term accelerated depreciation. So in the United States right now, they're doing this accelerated depreciation. People can get even more back. So you may not pay taxes on your real estate, even when you're making a lot of money. Now that does not exist in other asset classes. Okay. So you got taxes. Real estate has considerable tax advantages, as I just mentioned. One of those, though, is a 1031 exchange. You probably are aware of this, but essentially what it means is that if you are able to, you can sell a property as long as you then take the funds from that property, the, the capital, and you apply it to a new property. There's fine print on that. You apply that to a new property. Maybe you had three single family homes and then you wanted to buy a much larger property with that, you could do that. You could sell them all, buy into this new property, no tax. You don't pay tax on that. It's not a taxable event. And so that allows you to continue to grow your portfolio over time. So maybe, you know, if your parent did that and they had two or three properties, the 1031 exchange, they made that work. Well, then maybe you can take that over and there's different laws around that. But the point I'm trying to make is this can snowball over time, over time. And that's why we've got to start as young as possible, but never giving up because we can do this over many, many years and decades and even into future generations. Then we have amortization. What other asset class has someone else paying off your debt? You took out debt. You took out a loan. Let's just say it was $400,000 loan. Okay. Now, normally you take out a loan, you, you got to pay that back. But what if somebody else was paying that back? I mean, it's mind boggling that you own the asset, you get the depreciation, you get the tax advantages, but you also have somebody that pays your debt. Incredible. Also, you get to use leverage in a safe and secure manner. Hopefully some people don't, which is hard to come by in other assets. You, you just can't do that. And so are there disadvantages? Yes, absolutely. That's not what this video is about. This video is about the uniqueness of real estate. And these are the four ways that it has the ability to make money. There's all different business structures that people can do. People are doing Airbnbs. People are doing arbitrage Airbnb. People are would take like, let's say, like I said, uh, take one home, split it up into two units, three units, four units, whatever the case may be. You're seeing some that tend to be near schools, universities, where they divide that up into multiple units. Some cases they shouldn't be doing that, uh, but the point is they split that up. People pay a very low price compared to what the market rent is, and they share resources, it's kind of like a mini dorm. And they do that, and hey, they benefit from this as a result. Okay, so they're bringing in multiple streams of income within one set property. You could also do this where you rent out parts of a property. So maybe you're in like this really like downtown core type of zone and you happen to have a driveway. Maybe you don't use that driveway. You could rent that driveway out. You can put an electric charger on that driveway and charge people per usage. You could rent out your backyard because maybe you got some space. Maybe you can post that space on Kijiji and Craigslist and then you can have a garden back there or you could say, hey, store your stuff back here. All these different things that have advantages with real estate by owning that property that you got to be able to take advantage of if you can. Many different things here. I just highlighted a few. If you appreciated this financial education, make sure to share this with somebody that you know could use the information. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.